um, would like to title sort of the speech as a decade of action uh, developing sustainable resilient urban spaces for all and uh, today i would like to explore explore with you uh, after this great initiative focusing on what can we do with uh, uh, students the the whole society around university campuses on mitigating climate change or, or adapting uh, to um, yeah all the outcomes the impact of, of what the climate change is now affecting us so i think it's an interesting uh, topic i will um, take it a bit uh, broader from uh, you and habitat's perspective and um, let me share what i would like to uh, discuss with you today so um, when we had a discussion uh, together with Siren, we uh, yeah, were asking, what can I do? What can a student do? What can a university do? And I think I would also like to start with that uh, from my side, how I uh, came about working in this uh, field of work. Then I'll discuss some urbanization trends. I will introduce you in Habitat to you for the ones that are not familiar yet with the organization. Uh, we'll uh, discuss the opportunities for sustainable uh, urban development and uh, focusing a bit more on climate uh, action. And then um, uh, we'll share with you some more uh, practical and, and guidelines on, on how to come from planning to, to implementation. Uh, and then I would like to conclude with what can we all together can do in this uh, decade of action uh, towards 2030, the sustainable development goals. So first I will start a bit with introducing myself. I also began as a student uh, at the Technical University uh, of Delft studying architecture and urbanism. And um, from there, I, I started to work as an architect, uh, also working on urban design, in, mostly in the Netherlands. And uh, what for me was important to not only focus on, on sort of the design, in the 90s, there was a lot of budget for making beautiful facades, for example. I wanted to focus more on sort of uh, the social processes, how to include people, how to make sure that uh, the, the built environment that we are creating together are really sort of, um, yeah, in, in line with what the, the people need and, and want and, and to be uh, able to express that um, in our surroundings. And, um, so I want to share with you this picture. Uh, I also saw that uh, I think uh, Ms. Heiger also shared a picture of Parking Day. This was uh, quite fast after um, my first experience as an architect to start working as a placemaker, uh, really working together with communities, uh, yeah, trying to get action on the ground. And I think that's where my passion began, uh, came in, how to work more um, in the field of participatory urban planning. But then, uh, as Seren also said, um, after a journey uh, working from the Netherlands on, on uh, public spaces and placemaking, I, I moved to first to, to Kenya, uh, also working on placemaking, but also integrated urban systems, urban regeneration, topics like that. And then I worked in, uh, for UN Habitat in, in Palestine and, um, and, and after that to Afghanistan for, for one and a half years, working on sustainable urban development in 12 cities, including uh, 22 districts in Kabul, working together with the communities to develop um, in an integrated way projects for schools, um, streets, parks, etc. And, and also being able to uh, make sure to how to finance that with the better tax system and the land use uh, registration system. And here you can see, uh, I thought it is an, uh, an opportunity to, uh, yeah, to, to share that I, I've been working there on development that's, that is so important to, towards peace. And I think we had a lot of good experience with all the people that are so eager to build up their, their um, uh, yeah, living environments. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really painful to see what, what's happening at the moment. Um, but then uh, after this experience in Afghanistan, I um, started to work at UN Habitat at the headquarters in Nairobi, in Kenya. Uh, and, and now I'm working more globally um, in around 19 cities um, in the world. And I will also share a bit my um, experiences from that. But first I would like to um, also expect, um, expand a bit on the urbanization trends globally. Uh, some of them are already mentioned, but just to uh, share sort of the evidence, what, what uh, is the situation we are at and, and uh, what uh, is needed to address. 
So we know uh, that um, more than half of the population lives in urban areas, but as you can see in the picture, that's not always uh, in an sort of equal way. Uh, we see a lot of increased in inequalities uh, and that um, even after also the pandemic, I think more and more it became sort of visible, um, uh, the status of, of inequalities in the cities. We have 1 billion people living in informal settlements and slums. You can see uh, a picture here um, from people that are living very closely in small places without uh, a lot of services. For example, uh, 4.2 billion people suffer from in inadequate sanitation, but that's only one of the services like electricity or, or uh, public transport that is lacking in, for so many uh, people. And then we also see that um, very timely in the um, uh, climate uh, debate that 75% um, of the uh, CO2 emissions, um, yeah, cities are responsible for that. And, and most of that through uh, transportation and, and cars, as you can see here. Then the effects of uh, climate change, there's, there's um, 14 million people, homeless persons every year due to natural disasters. And, and often those people are living in vulnerable areas in, in, within cities, in Delta cities, etc. We also see uh, that 70% is, uh, of the glo of global waste is produced in cities. But of course, we also have the opportunity. There's also 70% um, of the uh, GDP um, is, is also developed in, in, in cities. Just to shape the context. So why is UN Habitat there? So you, UN Habitat is the United Nations um, a program uh, on human settlements. And it was established in around 1978 uh, with a smaller program to respond to um, urbanization uh, trends uh, happening um, uh, from then, and, and that was addressed to uh, make sure that sustainable urban development can be a driver uh, towards peace and security. And um, UN Habitat is, um, uh, yeah, is given the mandate to promote socially inclusive um, cities and towns uh, uh, across the globe, uh, focusing uh, on, on uh, social inclusion, inclusive prosperity, but also environmental, sustainable uh, urban development, the three uh, sort of angles that uh, were mentioned already earlier today. And here you can see the new urban agenda. That's um, an, uh, an agenda that sort of localizes the sustainable development goals. I will talk about it later. And, and UN Habitat adopted them at the Habitat Assembly 2016 in Quito with all the member states that they are going to uh, yeah, um, act on sustainable urban development. So UN Habitat has sort of four roles to play. So we, uh, we say we think, do, partner and share. And, and think stands for developing um, normative standards uh, for um, sustainable urbanization. Do is to actually translate that in uh, projects on the ground to also um, learn from um, global challenges and, and local solutions. So there's uh, definitely an interaction on that. Then we also partner with, um, uh, of course, the, the, uh, the governments, but the, um, also communities, academia, uh, private sector, to uh, make sure that um, the, the mandate can be achieved together. And we share, we, we promote, uh, we advocate for um, uh, sustainable urban development. So here you can see in short sort of our focus for the, the coming years, our strategic plan. Uh, you can see sort of the, the end goal, but also drivers for change like policy, legislation, urban planning and design, um, governance and, and financing mechanisms. And in the middle, you see the, the four um, domains where we expect to see change. Now we'll zoom in a bit to um, to make them clear for, for you. So we focus on reduced spatial inequality and, and poverty in communities. We focus on enhanced shared prosperity in cities, 
focus on climate action and improved urban environments, and also um, more and more focusing on uh, urban crisis prevention and response. Uh, as, for example, many people migrate to cities, refugees um, are not always ending up in a sort of established uh, places, but, but just sort of uh, migrating to the cities. So we um, sort of practical where we are in the world. So uh, I'm based in Nairobi at the headquarters and uh, we have different, uh, several uh, regional offices uh, in the Asia Pacific, in uh, Latin America um, and also in the, the Arab region. And we also, uh, and, and, and the, in, the, in Africa, um, and on the African continent as well. And then uh, we have some liaison offices where other UN agencies are based, so we can also work better together as, as one uh, United Nations. And uh, in New York, uh, there's also the liaison office where the sort of secretariat is of, of UN Habitat. And then we have many country offices around 70 uh, across the globe to really implement work on the ground with the with the cities and, um, and the national governments. So uh, our core sort of mandate is to, uh, together with all the member states agreed to focus on sustainable urban development for all. And um, you are uh, hopefully aware of, of the goals, but I will try to explain a bit further how that sort of um, helping with uh, addressing those goals in, in, the, in urban development. So it, it was quite an achievement that after the uh, Millennium Goals that were sort of uh, um, ended in 2015 and the new uh, Sustainable Urban Development uh, Goals were developed, that there was uh, one change that it was uh, for all uh, countries, uh, Global North, Global South, to all help with the key issues that are um, at stake. Uh, climate change, but, but uh, of course, starting with no poverty and, and zero hunger as sort of the key uh, goals that were taken from the Millennium Goals before. But it was also an opportunity to, um, to address sustainable cities and communities, goal 11, and I will dive a bit deeper on, on that one. But as you can see, a lot of the uh, goals that uh, all the member states agreed upon are linked to cities. Uh, for example, uh, land tenure and security can contribute to, to no poverty, um, uh, no hunger, urban rural linkages to ensure uh, good food um, systems, um, gender equality, urban safety are projects that can contribute to that. So that's as, um, and, and the, the spectrum of the, of the goals are really um, can be achieved in, in cities. But if we dive a bit deeper in goal 11, you can see that there are um, a few targets to, to achieve uh, in, in 2030. Uh, one, uh, the first one is on safe and affordable housing. The second one on, on sustainable transport systems. Then we have uh, uh, the goal number three on inclusive uh, sustainable urbanization. So that's more focusing on uh, inclusive planning. And um, the uh, fourth goal is on cultural natural heritage. And then we have um, the goal focusing on climate, uh, um, adapting to the, the natural disasters that are um, in, in city, uh, taking place in the cities. Uh, also try to reduce the environmental, in, environmental impact and to promote public spaces. So those are the sort of seven goals, um, most importantly for, for the cities to, to address. But as I mentioned before, around one third of the indicators are actually uh, can be measured on on, um, on city level, and therefore we develop this new new urban agenda to make make sure that there's action to address uh, this uh, sustainable urban development is for all. So we really address all the sort of disadvantaged groups that needs to be included in the in the planning process. Um, it sort of rethinks the way cities are planned, designed, financed, developed, governed and managed. So it's really talking about the uh, how to achieve uh, the SDGs on local level and also to, um, to make sure that we all together working towards the same implementation of this 2030 agenda. But, uh, and as I said, it's, it's really focusing on the how. So 
the uh, new urban agenda describes how to develop these national urban policies on national level, thinking about how we should uh, address urban issues. And then uh, that can be implemented also on local level. Rules and regulations, financing, they are all sort of the, uh, and together with urban planning and design, are sort of the, the key enablers to, um, yeah, to, to, to implement the work uh, in the end with actual projects. So then moving to, uh, towards climate action, uh, you all uh, are aware of the indeed um, alarming uh, IPCC report. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's, it's good to have a sort of confirmation on, on the urgency. And again, um, our executive director here in the middle, uh, Ms. Maimouna Mohd-Sharif, she's really focusing on, on what can cities do, what can communities do. Uh, to make sure that they are resilient and contribute to um, mitigating climate change. And cities and communities are already affected. You can see here this overview you're all uh, aware of, but good uh, to, to put them all in, in one uh, sheet. So we, we are working a lot on flood management, for example, uh, but also how to um, um, uh, what can I say, mitigate these heat waves, how to mitigate greenhouse gases, air pollution that's uh, also now with the pandemic was quite um, apparent that uh, without making use of, of production and, and, and cars, etc., that the air, air became brighter and brighter. So we saw the, the changes. Um, and so you, the, this is a good sort of overview of that. And then how can we uh, integrate this um, sort of solutions uh, in the urban uh, and environmental mm. agenda? So we uh, indeed, what I said, sort of a flood management, focusing on clean air, making green spaces, uh, ensuring that the city is com compact and walkable, uh, you know, to ensure that uh, the car is, is less needed, focusing on renewable energies, et, et cetera. And just to also shape a bit sort of the, the context of, of the UN all working together with an important uh, uh, COP26 in, in November in Glasgow, uh, UN, uh, all the United Nations um, organizations and, and member states trying to, uh, to focus on these issues that were mentioned at on city level, but uh, on, on global level. So the, the race to zero, there you can find information on how to um, uh, yeah, make sure that we are uh, reducing our CO2 uh, emissions. Zero carbon for cities is also a slogan being used to accelerate clean energy. And then we have the race to resilience to support um, ideas to help communities adapting to uh, climate impact. Um, finance is an important part of the work because there are so many uh, funds actually available to fund. Um, climate uh, action projects, but the, at, the, at the moment there's a huge gap on, on making sure that those projects are actually viable and, um, um, what can I say, bankable in order to, uh, to be supported. And that's something that we uh, can all contribute. And then we have the, uh, the promotion, uh, how to green recover uh, in, in cities. So then um, now I would like to take a step uh, deeper in uh, urban planning and, and focusing on, on this implementation. How can we make sure we can actually create action instead of, um, well, what can I say, uh, developing plans, but, but often we see that, uh, that they end up on the shelf. So how can we make sure that uh, people are engaged, pe uh, governments are committed to take action? How can we support all uh, together to, um, to, to ensure that action is taken so we can actually achieve the goals and, and um, make sure we are all living in um, a safe and, and inclusive uh, environments and uh, focusing on the, the people in all scales of urban development to start with. So we've seen a lot of business as usual planning all around the world. Um, urban sprawl is, is um, uh, not helping towards um, 
helping the climate, but it's also not helping the people. If you build a more compact city, you can offer services, you can make sure that you uh, mitigate gases if you uh, uh, make sure that you have a walkable town, as I just mentioned. Uh, we see a lot of segregation uh, seen also now by these images here. How can we create a more integrated uh, model for people living together? And uh, how can we prevent congestion in, in so many cities around the world? How can we um, connect um, in a sustainable way our people and our cities? And with uh, the Urban Lab and uh, UN Habitat, at UN Habitat, we developed these five principles to take you to sort of the neighborhood level on um, how uh, do we need to, to address this sort of uh, sustainable urban development. So one is uh, creating adequate spaces for streets and public space. Uh, two is mixed land use. Three is a social mix. Four is uh, realize adequate densities and five focusing on, on connectivity. I will show you a few examples of, of that. So here you can see the first example um, that it's important to allocate lands to streets, not only to um, allocate space to um, sort of the private parts of the city, but more the public realm, uh, which we share and which is important to uh, make sure that the, the cities are healthy and connected. So you can see here, uh, images of 30%, 36% of land allocated to streets in a city in Manhattan, where you, uh, uh, whereas in, in Moscow you see only 50% of land allocated to the streets with, with less of connectivity and, and uh, uh, you see all the problems that are arising here. Mixed land use, I mean, this is an easy uh, picture, but uh, you can see a, a lot of uh, housing projects develops to sort of uh, tick the box, creating numbers to allocate people, but in the end, if, if there's no other opportunity to um, get your groceries, to go to school, to study, uh, then of course the, this is very unsustainable um, uh, solution to uh, to create, yeah, to make use of our land and to create cities. This is actually not um, a city. I see that this. Uh, image is lacking, but this is, um, I want to share an example of, of the social mix. How can we make sure that different groups uh, are living in, in the same areas uh, to, to make sure that uh, people meet each other and, and that there are services for all um, uh, available. And uh, yeah, you can see here half of the images, but uh, this is a, a, a a very visual example of how we uh, often segregate uh, our, our plans for our cities to perhaps make sure it's efficient and easy to implement, but is it in the end helping us to um, have a, a better living? And here you see uh, some images on, on density. All these sort of uh, plans for a neighborhood block have, diff have the same uh, density, but different uh, forms of density have, have different impacts. So here you can also see sort of the, the mix of uses uh, can help with that. And this is an, uh, a graph that shows that um, uh, reduced uh, need to travel uh, through creating sort of uh, yeah, the proximity. Uh, it's also uh, something that came up after the pandemic when people walking and cycling much more often um, in their own neighborhoods instead of traveling far, going to their jobs, uh, one hour travel um, and, and creating this sort of connectivity. Um, and this, uh, what can I say? Uh, even the, the ideas now for the 15 minute city to, to within five, 15 minutes being able to, um, uh, what can I say, yeah, uh, make use of what the city can offer to you uh, is, is something that is, is a sustainable concept and now being sort of tested uh, in, in some of the major cities in, in Paris, for example. So we developed this uh, participatory urban planning uh, pathway to help from uh, getting from planning to implementation, how to, sorry, this is in, in Spanish, but uh, it's also available in English, uh, how to sort of assess, how to plan, how to operationalize and, and implement 
uh, urban projects and focusing on the support of intermediate cities and uh, focusing on, on participation. Um, as you with you and Habitat, there's a key role for us to play to support the cities that maybe not have the capacity to um, make sure that they can uh, um, fulfill those processes that are needed. So we also developed with the UN Habitat many guidelines and tools um, together with our partners also on the ground. And that can be helpful. So perhaps for you to, uh, to inform your studies and, and work in, in the future. So we have, for example, an urban planning a guideline for city leaders. And in the second uh, uh, guide is this five principles for neighborhood planning that I just highlighted. We have the urban planning and design labs that I'm working for and an example of how a spatial development framework could look like. Um, and that was an example of, of uh, Johannesburg in, in South Africa. We also develop um, guidelines on urban mobility. And I think also um, uh, relevant for the work that you are now focusing on in, in this summer school is how to uh, plan for climate change and how to create action on the ground. And then uh, to make sure that we can actually implement all the plans that we have, we have some guidelines for urban finance as well and, and making sure that the regulatory frameworks are in place. So after sharing the sort of uh, key mandate of UN Habitat, the issues that we are facing and trying to solve together um, based on sort of all the normative work that we are doing. I would also like to show uh, one of the programs that I'm working on, the Global Future Cities program, where we actually try to implement all those ideas through uh, one of the tools that we developed, this SDG project assessment tool. So the, uh, the Future Cities program uh, I'm, I'm working on, it's actually 2018. Uh, it's a program that you and Habitat is um, working on for the UK government um, to achieve uh, inclusive prosperity in, in the cities that you are seeing here from Brazil to Vietnam but um, uh, and also in, in Turkey a bit more closer by but I also heard that there are people from Southeast Asia present so uh, yeah here you can see how we actually try to um, support cities with better urban planning uh, and management uh, systems through uh, uh, developing projects together and we are focusing on um, urban planning and also urban mobility, uh, risk and resilience and, and uh, how to make use of uh, data. And the role of urban habitat is to be a strategic partner to, this, uh, to the UK government to make sure that those SDGs that are developed are actually implemented. Uh, and to improve the, the planning of those uh, of the cities that I just mentioned. And uh, the idea is that we not only focusing on uh, implementing projects well, but how can you make sure that those projects are uh, transformative, that they actually are sort of learning by doing together with the city authorities, private sector partners that are actually developing the projects and, and the, uh, the donor, the UK government, Foreign Development and Commonwealth Office, they are on the ground as well to support. And we, uh, what we would like to bring in is bringing in the normative work that, that I just showed, uh, shown to you, sort of what are the uh, international standards and guidelines, but then we can also learn back from what's happening on the ground to uh, inform those norms uh, um, again, to make sure that uh, it's updated and, and relevant. What we also would like to do in this program is to make sure that cities are informed clients, that they are aware of these standards, but they also uh, are able to work together with uh, the private sector uh, partners. They have huge portfolios, cities um, do not have the capacities themselves, and how can they actually be a good client, asking the right questions? Do they get what they want from the delivery partners? Um, to make sure that their own priorities and their own vision is being um, yeah, sort of implemented. And uh, the third point that we uh, try to um, achieve here with, with UN Habitat is to make sure that the investments that are needed to implement, for example, um, a mobility project, that they are viable and that they address the SDGs. 
And I think that's also what I mentioned before, that this gap between sort of finance for sustainable projects, there's still um, uh, uh, a lot to, to work towards that, to make, to match make a good projects with uh, investors. So then how do we do that? Um, I hope it's not too abstract so far, uh, but we um, provide advice and, and sort of technical recommendation. How does a good project look like based on um, the, the sustainable development goals and, and the targets that um, we all agreed upon? And then we also provide capacity building to the cities, uh, the, the, the people that we are working on uh, with. So that's, for example, the head of a uh, transportation department or an urban planning department, or even a, a mayor to make the, sure that the right decisions are made. And then the third component that we are um, contributing to is knowledge management, to make sure that we extract knowledge from the ground, uh, developing new norms, um, and also uh, sharing knowledge through a platform. I will share with you the link later, and also to make sure that the, the work that we are doing is visible. So there's also room for replicating the work that we are doing. And it's not a one-off uh, program. Maybe to make it a bit more tangible, what kind of projects are developed within the program? So that's, uh, and, and especially focusing now on, on resilience. In Ho Chi Minh City, we are uh, uh, supporting the city with um, drainage system uh, digitization with, uh, with GIS uh, plans, mapping those for um, some districts in, in the city. Uh, they have a lot of uh, floodings every year, um, which uh, in some cases affects the more vulnerable living alongside the river, the uh, more informal areas, but also economically, uh, a lot of people cannot go to their jobs because of these floods and, and there's a lot of economic damage there as well. And then in Bangkok, you see uh, it's also uh, this Delta city with floods coming from both sides, sea and rivers. And there we are supporting the city with the decision support system for flood management. Um, and, and in Surabaya in Indonesia, we are supporting with an earthquake preparedness strategy. And what we try to do is to really focus sort of the, on, the, on the territorial dimension, the spatial dimension. So to make sure that problems are solved where the, uh, uh, actually the, the problems are uh, providing maps and making sure that uh, it's all clear uh, and, and sort of tangible for, for the whole team working on that. And uh, what was also an important part of our work uh, is, is to localize these SDGs. Uh, as I just ex um, shortly show, uh, shown to you is the, the targets and uh, sort of the indicators to measure them. Uh, which we all received the reports on and, and are not super progressive. But how can we, if we identify gaps in the achievement of one of the goals, how can we make sure that the projects that we are developing in the cities are uh, contributing to those? So that's something that we try to do. How can we uh, make sure that the projects that are developed um, have the, the right quality? then uh, and, and be, are compliant with the, the standards. So there's also room for investment. And also in the end that these national reports that are delivered are improved um, uh, by uh, sustainable investments. So the SDG tool project assessment, uh, sorry, SDG project assessment tool, what we, um, what we developed is a general framework uh, and, and a, a guideline to help localizing the SDGs in the, in the field of, of uh, project development, to improve the quality, to make sure that they are implementable and viable, and um, very important to steer a participatory process. So the cities take their ownership and also the private sector partners make sure that they sort of uh, integrate the sustainability principles. You can uh, take a look at the tool at the link I just uh, provided here. And therefore, there's a sort of a framework and a user guide to make sure that this participatory process is also followed. It's not just a checklist of is this project good or not. It's actually more a process of how uh, can a project be developed together, asking the right questions um, to make sure that the uh, a project is de developed well. And as I just uh, uh, shared the, all these sort of norms and standards, these technical principles, they are now linked to the targets of the sustainable development goals. So you see 
uh, on the on the left you see technical aspects how can projects contribute to social inclusion uh, planning environment and, and economic development but uh, even more yeah what can i say um, as important uh, to address effectiveness aspects and we call that the data-driven processes capacity building urban go governance legal frameworks and financial strategies and th that's more the enabling environment to make sure that the ideas uh, that are uh, well developed are implemented in total we developed 55 sustainability principles and criteria to uh, make sure that the, the projects that are developed being discussed around these uh, principles. Just to share a few examples. So uh, the first one, if you can see, it's an incentive to promote behavioral shifts to increase the use and uh, provision of modes, uh, sustainable uh, modes of transport. And there, there's already sort of a link to which uh, goals this uh, principle aligns to. And if you go all the way to the bottom, it's about uh, evidence-based uh, decision-making processes, making sure that there's um, that, that the project make use of, of the right data, disaggregated data, for example, to make sure that all voices are heard and addressed. And again, uh, the importance of working together. So what we do all the way in the beginning of a process, we uh, come together with all the, the partners and we, uh, oh, excuse me, let me do this back. Um, together, we select the uh, sustainability principles that are relevant for the project. So, um, uh, in the end, if there are uh, 54 principles to select from, uh, we end up, for example, with 12 key issues that we would like to discuss around the, the process of the project development. So that was step one to define this set of principles. And then we, um, we uh, the, sorry, the delivery partner, and in this case it's the private sector that's developing a project for the city authority. Uh, they deliver um, outputs and then we discuss the results together with all the partners. So that's also UN Habitat, it's the city authority, it's the donor and, and the private sector partners. Then UN Habitat, we provide recommendations and then it's up to the, a private sector partner to improve the project and that's an iterative process uh, with session like three to five sessions um, depending on the duration of project development and in our case that's around uh, two to three years and an i can i can show you an example how we uh, worked uh, on an urban regeneration project in soweto in johannesburg um, this, this area you can see on the left um, in Johannesburg is quite disconnected from the city. Uh, it's a high population, but they're socially and econom economically and environmentally, they're really uh, disconnected and, and cannot participate in making use of the services of the city. So that's the attempt to, to create more economic <coughs> development, uh, create more connectivity and, and uh, economic development opportunities. So this urban regeneration project um, addresses uh, several goals and you can see here the potential for this project to address. And that's uh, an outcome of the um, selection of sustainability principles. So you can see that goal 11 on sustainable cities and communities um, has the, the biggest potential, but also uh, goals on, on uh, partnerships uh, how to work together, goal number 17, is also um, strongly represented. And um, no poverty, uh, infrastructure and, um, and industry are, are um, yeah, some of the goals that have a, a strong contribution uh, by this project. And this becomes a bit more technical, but here you can see uh, one of the principles, mixed use development is, is key for this project. And here you can see um, on the left, the sustainability principle. Then you can see the uh, SDG target alignment. So every goal has several targets. And then we um, assess with, with the technical experts within Habitat, how um, these technical aspects, these principles and criteria can inform, can contribute to the, to the goals. And if we just take one example, um, 
uh, if you do if you develop a project and you do a background assessment, making sure that uh, you uh, you uh, have the population growth, population job density, accessibility trends, all sort of being mapped out, making sure that uh, the project promotes mixed use development as coming out of this neighborhood principles and, and so on. Um, then there's also the uh, principle integrated urban planning and design, also focusing on transport. We developed some criteria and there you can see the link to the goals uh, uh, listed on the top. And there's also a role to play for this project to be climate responsive. Uh, how urban design solutions uh, can be created that are climate responsive and ensure comfort and enhance urban resilience. And then this criteria will, will make sure that this, these can be discussed and sort of checked with the partners if, if they are addressed in this project. And nowadays we, um, we have to work online with the cities because there we have people on the ground uh, working in all the cities, in the 19 cities. Uh, so um, those colleagues sometimes can still participate in a physical meeting, but often uh, there are lockdowns and we all have to uh, uh, communicate uh, online. And I think uh, in one way it's, it's good uh, sort of accelerator of all joining online and we are able to connect better. But in some cases, it's also challenging. Uh, yeah, you can already see now how, how difficult it is sometimes to, to stay connected. Uh, but I think we, uh, we're achieving well so still our results. And um, that's sort of yeah, the positive and the negative side of, of this online way of working. And here you can see the ambition. So you have, for example, a few sessions uh, to discuss the results of the project. And we hope to, uh, in, in the first one, sort of to already see where are the gaps and then later on in the, in the process to achieve more and more goals. So you can see the gray bars, but we in the end hope to fulfill the full potential of the project uh, in, yeah, at the end of the delivery. And here you can see some other project profiles. So uh, mobility has um, maybe a bit stronger components on um, uh, infrastructure. Uh, while uh, urban renewal guidelines has a, a strong sort of uh, profile along all the goals as it's a sort of an integrated urban project. So now to maybe come more at the end of um, my contribution for today. So what can we do? I think um, if you think about do and, and think uh, you're all working on, on research and projects, I think it's, it's also important to really act and, and uh, besides your studies already trying to implement projects and, and uh, implement sort of the su sustainability principles that are already uh, present and, and also to be critical about those and uh, make sure that they are updated and localized. Um, and regarding share and partner, I think there are uh, upcoming opportunities to also share your work on, on climate in the university campuses in the during urban October. It's a month of uh, discussions uh, globally on, on um, yeah, urban issues. And there's uh, one day World Habitat Day uh, on the 4th of October in the beginning of the month that will discuss accelerating urban action for a carbon free world, more on mitigation. And then in the end of the month, we have um, the theme of adapting cities for climate resilience. Uh, helping communities ad adapt to the effects. Um, and there's an Innovation for Cities conference um, in the mid of October, uh, where also um, innovation for climate action is being shared in, in cities. So uh, yeah, you can follow online and perhaps participate and um, learn and share your experiences. And there's also an opportunity to develop urban thinkers campuses, and that's a platform to bring together urban researchers, practitioners, uh, decision makers to address these challenges. And there will be a lot also focusing around climate towards the uh, COP26 this year. I also um, organized once an urban thinkers campus on uh, uh, placemaking in, in Kenya. And it was a great opportunity actually to uh, bring together all um, uh, yeah, com from community to researchers, researchers local and international to really discuss the, uh, the issues here in, in uh, neighborhoods in, in Nairobi. 
And there's a highlight uh, next year in June, a bit far ahead maybe for you, but in, in, uh, in Poland, there will be the World Urban Forum, the 11th um, platform to uh, also bring together the um, urban society to discuss um, uh, uh, yeah, our urban future. Uh, so you can also see how you can uh, register and, and, and join one of the sessions that uh, might be interesting for you. But maybe to end, um, I, I would like to promote uh, yeah, taking action and, and uh, starting to test your work and uh, working together with uh, the communities, maybe in your uh, university campus to start with, but also engaging uh, neighborhoods around it. How is it connected actually in the cities? who uh, can also benefit from the dynamics and the, uh, that, that, that are um, in, the, in the campus. And I think that's something that I would like to, to spur, uh, not, yeah, not only sitting behind your desk, especially now in, in COVID, um, but what can, can we do, uh, of course, within sort of the uh, social distancing, et cetera, nowadays, but uh, yeah, go into the field and, and make sure you, you learn from from the ground. Uh, I think that that could help localize all these sort of theoretical ideas that we are trying to, to, um, to capture. Uh, it helps you to innovate, um, hearing different stories, needs on the ground. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity for you if you are young to start your career by, by doing. And, and um, yeah, nowadays I'm, I'm more and more often behind the computer. So I'm uh, uh, happy to share this message with you. So, uh, um, and that, and also to me, actually, what can we do? So, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I'm um, uh, open to share my email address. If you have any further questions, uh, wish you all a great summer school and a lot of action. And uh, hopefully, we can all work together to a better urban future. Thanks a lot for your attention. Uh, I hope it was not too long.